What's happening, Booth Junkies? Mike Delgadio here again with another installment in our Reaper for VoiceOver series. In this lesson, we're going to work on creating and editing tracks and adding effects to tracks. So why don't we just jump right in and get started? Here we have a Reaper project and a script on screen, and we're going to just do a quick bit of voice acting so that we can see how we can edit. So we begin by clicking Insert and then Track, and that gives us a new track in Reaper. Let's expand it a little bit so that we can see it. So we can just drag the bottom of that track down so we get a nice big uh, area for the waveform. We will arm the track. That means we'll get it ready for recording by clicking that red button next to it. You can confirm that the track is ready to record by seeing the meters moving. So that's my voice now speaking into this microphone. And we can see that the track is moving. So I'm just going to record this. Chances are we'll make mistakes. And what I have here in my hand is a little clicker. That little clicker makes a noise, and you'll see it on the waveform. It's a trick that I use for editing. And I've actually made a whole video on how to use this clicker for editing. But I use it as a way to help me note in the track where I've made mistakes. So I'm just going to record this. I'll probably mess it up a time or two. Uh, and if you hear that click, that's just what it means. So let's go ahead and start to record. So the way we do that is we go over to Reaper. And we've got these transport layers, these transport controls on the bottom. And that red button says record. When I click record, we'll actually see that the waveform starts to go across the screen. And that's my voice making that pattern on the screen. So let's just give a couple of seconds of silence and we'll begin. Maury, you owe me. We'll play anywhere, anytime for anybody. Put us up in the Double Up Lounge or the Morgan Park Theater or the Crystal. We always knock them dead in those joints. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed, you know what I mean? Uh, what are you guys going to do? The same act? Wearing those same Fakakta suits? You'll scare people away. Don't you guys ever wear blue jeans or jumpsuits like Wayne Cochran or CC Riders? Maury, you got to come through for us. We need 5,000 bucks. Fast. 5,000 bucks? Who do you guys think you are? The Beatles? Hey, you know the kind of... Hey, you know the size of the hall you got to work to take in that kind of money, huh? We'll fill any hall in the country. <sighs> you guys familiar with the Palace Hotel Ballroom? Never heard of it. Nice place, up north. Built in the 40s on Lake Wazapumani. That seats 5,000. You guys fill that place? You can make 5,000 bucks easy. Book us for tomorrow night. Hold it. Hold it. Tomorrow night? What are you talking about? A gig like that? You gotta prepare the proper uh, exploitation. I know all about that stuff. I've been exploited all my life. Ah, forget it. There's no way with you guys. Uh, just forget about it. Say, uh, how's Mrs. Sline? I have some information she'd like to know. You blackmailing me, Jake. If you want to put it that way, Maury, we need this gig. We're on a mission from God. You get us the hall, Maury, and I guarantee we'll pack them in for miles around. Come on, what do you say? Okay, I'll get you the Palace Hotel. I'll print up show bills. I'll make the place look real pretty, okay? I don't think you guys are going to gross dollar one. But if you do, I want a taste of the gig, okay? Okay, let's go, boys. And so we've recorded, made a couple of mistakes in there. Uh, so it's now prompting us to save that file. So we'll just tell it to save. And now we can see that whole waveform here on our screen. So let me just uh, move that script out of the way. And we'll look at how we do the recording. Uh, now, that, now we'll look and see how we do the editing of it. So I'm just using my mouse to scroll back and forth. And we can see the entirety of the wave. So let's listen back. I'll actually see that the waveform starts to go across the screen, and that's my voice making that pattern on the screen. So that's. So let's just give a couple of seconds. in the intro. Maury, you owe me. We'll play anywhere, anytime for anybody. Put us up in the Double Up Lounge or the Morgan Park Theater or the Crystal. We always knock them dead in those joints. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed. You know what I mean? Uh, what are you guys going to do? The same act? Okay, so we now can hear it back. And because I was 
portraying both people, the, the cadence of the conversation is a little bit wrong. The pauses are a little bit big for making it a snappy, a snappy scene. So what we need to do is we need to edit this. And since we've got two different people talking, we'll need to split up these different segments and we'll need to move them together. And this will give us a good chance to look and see how we edit. The first thing that you're going to need to know is how to split a track. And so that just means cutting this one long, for lack of a better word, this one long piece of tape, we're going to split this piece of tape up into different segments. And the way we do that is we put this playhead, you see this little line, that's actually the, uh, the sample that's being played. That's exactly the moment that's being played. Maury, you owe me. We'll play any way. And wherever that line is, that's where the sound is coming from. And that's also where you can put a split. And so right before the beginning of the conversation, all I'm going to do is hit S on the keyboard, and that splits it. And so now we've got two different pieces of tape that we can manipulate. So this first piece that I click on, that was the junk in the beginning, right? That's my me. voice making that pat. That's me just rapping. So we want to, we can get rid of that. So I'll just click that, that piece of tape, that sec, that section, it's called an item in Reaper. So I'll click that item and I'll, and I'll hit the delete key and that will delete that item. And you notice I can click and drag and move these items around exactly to wherever I want them to be. Now on on Reaper, because we haven't gone through some of the configuration, you'll notice that the, the movement is not smooth. Uh, what happens is this is a, a holdover from the music production side of Reaper, and it's trying to map things to beats and measures, and it's snapping to a beat and a measure. By default, there's some tempo and there's some beats and measures. We're voice actors. We don't care about beats and measures. So in the beginning, you need to turn off snap. And that's that little magnet icon up here. So if you just turn that off so that, that goes dim, now we can smoothly drag it. Now, in, a, in another video in this series, I'll show you how you can change all of that stuff. We're just going to concentrate on recording and editing and manipulating on this one. But in, the, in a future video, I'll show you how you can customize this and get rid of all that music production stuff so you never have to worry about it again. So let's just cut up this conversation a little bit. I'll show you how to, to do the editing uh, and we'll, make it, we'll try and make this conversation a little snappier. Maury, you owe me. We'll play anywhere, anytime for anybody. Okay, so there is the end of the first, uh, the first character's dialogue. So I'm just going to split at that point. So now we've got it broken into two pieces that we can move independently. And what's neat about this is, and if you've come from Audacity, you didn't have this before, but you can actually have, you can drag those pieces right on top of each other and actually have them overlap. Anytime Put us up anybody. in the double up lounge so you can have the two characters talking over top of each other. And you notice those red lines, that is called a crossfade. So it's actually making one quieter as the other gets louder. Time for Press up in the double up lounge or the... And so you can move those. Now, typically for dialogue, you don't want to crossfade them. You might do that for music. Uh, but for dialogue, you typically don't need to crossfade. Uh, but you can overlap them if you want. So let's just listen to where the next character's uh, line ends. Park Theater or the Crystal. We always knock them dead in those joints. Ah, see, that was still my character. So we'll split there again. And we can put those two right up next to each other. Anybody. Put us up in the Double Up Lounge or the Morgan Park Theater or the Crystal. We always knock them dead in those joints. Okay, so now here's the next character. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed. You know what I mean? Uh, what are you guys going to do? The same act? Wearing those same Fakakta suits, it'll scare people away. Don't you guys ever wear blue jeans or jumpsuits like Wayne Cochran or C.C. Riders? Maury. All right, so there's where Maury's part ends. And we can have Maury go right up on top of Jake. I'm dead in those joints. I don't know, boys. Or we can those joints. adjust that. I don't timing. know, boys. Now... Sometimes those crossfades, that can make it a little bit hard to distinguish where one begins and one ends. So you can also drag that segment down, and it automatically creates a new track and puts it on top. Now we can actually see where one character ends and the next one begins. How come dead in those joints? I don't know, boys. So now we can put them right 
right on top of each other. How come dead in those joints? I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed, you know what I mean? Uh, what are you guys going to do, the same act? So now we've got two characters uh, right on top of each other. So now we have a channel, uh, a lane here for Jake and a lane here for Maury. That actually really helps. So now I can just drag the next one over. Wayne Cochran or C.C. Riders? C.C. Riders? Maury, you got to come through for us. We need 5000 bucks fast. 5000 Okay, so there's where Maury comes again. 5000 bucks. Who do you guys think you... Uh, let's control Z. Let's take that out. I cut that too early. Five thousand bucks. Who you guys think you are? The Beatles? Hey, you know the kind of. Oh, hey, you that. know the. That's where our error was. So remember, I told you I, I have this clicker that makes a clicking sound. That uh, that's a way for me to be able to see to recognize where there is a mistake. You see how it puts that sharp double line? That's a great way to indicate to yourself when you come back after where there is a mistake. Hey, you know the kind of, hey, you know the size of the hole you... So now I know that this section needs to come out. Now, this is where we'll learn about something called ripple editing. So normally, if, if you've been following along, what you would do is you would split at the beginning and click at the end and click split again, and then delete the part that you don't want. But look at what it oh, did. The it Beatles? put a gap. Hey, you know the size of the hole. It put just a big gap of silence there, and that's not very helpful. So let's just control Z and let's take all of that out. What we'd like it to do is we'd like to take that section out as if it had never existed. So what we would do is we would come over here, follow my cursor over here, and there's this button with the grid on it with the finger. That's called ripple editing. And what a ripple editor does is it automatically collapses out any area that would be silent after you delete. So if I put an, a split at the beginning and a split at the end, I select that part in the middle and I hit delete, you see it automatically compressed that track right over as if that section never existed. The Beatles? Hey, you know the size of the hole you gotta work to take in that kind of money? Huh? So now we have that section automatically collapsed out. Now here's what's cool about Reaper. Here's what really sets it apart from something like Audacity. If I drag the later piece and put that gap back, Reaper didn't actually destroy that section that we took out. It's still there. We can just drag one of those edges back in and we see we can put that tape. Right hey, you know back the in. kind of Hey, you know the So we can put that mistake right back in. That not only happens from that side, but it also happens from this side. So that area was still there. Even if we move the track later, you see, we can still put that section back in. So even though we've told Reaper we're not interested in that section anymore, it doesn't throw it away because you may become interested in it later. Just think you are, the Beatles? Hey, you know the size of the hole you got to work to take in that kind of money, huh? So there's Maury again. So let's put him on the next track. 5,000. So we'll move that down. We'll move that down. But now we have two pieces. They're timed properly, but it's two different 5,000 bucks. Who do you guys think you are? The Beatles? Hey, you know the size of the hole you... And that's actually now one piece of tape. We, we're interested in keeping that the way that is. So now if we're ready to destroy that one section, we can tell it by right-clicking, well, by selecting both of those segments, right-clicking, and choosing glue items. And that will turn them back into one new segment of tape. 5,000 bucks. Who do you guys think you are, the Beatles? Hey, you know the size of the hall you... So now it's one section and it can move all on its own. And now we can tweak exactly where we want that to begin in the conversation. It's fast. 5,000 bucks. Who do you guys think you are? The Beatles? Hey, you know the size of the hole you got to work to take in that kind of money, huh? So now we've got Jake and Maury talking in two different lanes. So let's go through and let's just continue to edit that section. All right, so there is our scene. 
Now we can listen back and we can see really nicely, we can see two different bits of dialogue on two different channels, or two different tracks, I should say. Before we showed the rippling, we have ripple set for one track. So if I move one item, you see how it drags everything on that track with it, everything sort of later on the timeline. You, If you click that button again, it's actually a three-state toggle. So if you click it again, it will then take from, from the point you're selecting all of the downstream tracks down the timeline on all of the, tr uh, all the items on all the tracks and will drag them all with you. So if you need to have something, if you needed to change the timing just a little bit and, and, and tweak that and you didn't want to mess up the rest of your, your section, you can turn on the, the multi-track, all-track uh, ripple editing. Bring our CC riders. Maury, you got to come through for us. Okay, so... That's ripple editing and multi-track ripple editing. Now, as we move these uh, things around, you see with that ripple editing, you have to remember to turn that off and on. But you can also tweak it within that one spot. So if you did like exactly where that spot was, but you just needed to make some minor tweaks, if you hold down the Option key on the Mac, I think that is the Alt key on Windows. I'm not sure which key it is on Windows, to be honest. But you can actually rotate that audio within the time segment right there. So you can actually slip it right in that spot. So you can actually tweak that so it matches up. Just Ocarina exactly. or CC Riders? Maury, you got to come through for us. We need... And that doesn't, without having to change the ripple, we can actually just hold down that option key and just ripple it right or slide it right within that little item. So now we have a recorded scene. We've got our dialogue split into two separate tracks. And if we listen to it, it sounds pretty good. I mean, you can tell that there's two different characters. We I always knock them dead in those joints. I tried to do two different voices anyway. We always knock them dead in those joints. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed, you know what I mean? But what I'd like to do is I'd like to maybe add some distinction between these characters so let's let's conceive of a scene in in the uh in the original script uh these two guys were in the same room next to each other uh but let's maybe turn it into one guy's with us in the room let's say jake's in the room with us and maury uh maybe this is a phone call we'll put him on on a phone on the other end so we can actually add some distinction distinguishing between the characters but it also gives us a chance to learn how to add effects to our tracks. Now, as voiceover artists, generally, if you're shipping off files to a client for their use, they'll only need minimal processing to it. You might just need to do a little tiny bit of cleanup to make sure you take your mistakes out, uh, take any extraneous breaths out using the editing that we learned earlier in the video. Uh, but it does help to know how to add effects to your tracks and to your items so that if you have something particular in mind for what you're going for, uh, you, that you know how to do it. So let's add an effect to Jake. He's the top track. Let's actually label him as Jake up here. So I'll just double click in that box next to the recording and I'll type in Jake. And our other character is Maury. So we'll have them in there. We're done with the recording, so I'm going to disarm the Jake track by clicking it. So now you see the monitor isn't moving. You don't hear my microphone anymore, but the tracks are still there. Now, let's start by adding an effect to Jake's voice. Uh, and let's make it sound like he's in a room. In the original script, he's supposed to be in a sauna. So let's make it sound like it's a little bit of an echoey room. We'll try and give some ambience to the room, and we'll do that by adding some reverb to it. So the way we do that is we add an effect. And so we do that by clicking this FX button. And the effects bring up a list of effects that we can add to the track and the effects that are actually there. So right now this FX window is blank because we have not added any effect. And over here is the picker that allows us to choose all of the different effects type. And you see that there are different plugin types. There's VST and VSTI and AU. That's really just a, an organization by the programmer. Uh, it doesn't really have really that much to do in Reaper. You can use any of the different kinds of plugins, VSTs or AUs or JS or, or any of them. 
Uh, but you can. there are lots and lots and lots of effects. You see these ones labeled Apple. Those actually got imported by GarageBand, which was on this PC. But you can see there are lots and lots that you can have. And most of the ones that are supplied by Reaper start with this REA. So you can see there's REA Q, REA Gate, REA Pitch for pitch shifting, and so forth. So let's add the first one. Let's add some reverb to this track, to Jake's character, to make it sound like he's in a room. So I'll just choose reverb and double click it, and that adds reverb to this track. Now, by default, no reverb is added. You actually have to tell it what type of reverb, reverb you'd like to add. So you can click Add, and you can see I can add echoes or different things, but generally I'll just use the reverb generator. And it gives you different parameters that you can slide. And I'm not going to go over all the different parameters, but these parameters are different sliders that you can do to affect the amount of reverb that is on this track. So I'm going to put on my headphones and listen to the reverb that it comes with by default. We always knock them dead in those joints. I don't know, boys. I, I just, that's not too bad. Uh, but you see there's some sliders that we can, we can do here. Uh, we can adjust the length and how loud the reverb is and how big the room is. We always knock them dead in those joints. We always knock them dead in those joints. I don't know, boy. So you see that, let's mute uh, Maury's track. Anywhere, anytime, for anybody. Put us up in the Double Up Lounge or the Morgan Park Theater or the Crystal. So interesting, it's adding effects. It's changing the way that, tr that track sounds. What's really great about this is it's happening after the fact. So we're not changing the file that's on disk. It's as it's being sent out through your sound card, it's having those effects added to it. So we're not destroying anything about the original, the original voice recording that we made, but we're just manipulating it on its way out I'm for anybody. Put us up in the double up lounge or the Morgan Park. Okay, so now we've got, I'll just leave it at that. We've got some reverb that actually gives... Jake some room tone. We actually get a sense of the space that he's in. He's just not in some uh, some dry vocal booth. Maury, you owe me. We'll play anywhere, anytime. And you can adjust that to whatever makes sense for you. And so you see that we have this effect added. Now there's a check mark next to it. If you wanted to bypass that particular effect, you can just uncheck it. And we're back to our original. Up in the Double Up Lounge or the Morgan Park Theater or the Crystal. We always knock them dead in those joints. So you see, as we, as we bypassed and turned it back on, we actually could hear the effect be applied and unapplied. Let's just leave Jake's like that for now. By having this green FX button lit, that means the effect is applied. And it will just stay like that. So let's switch over to Maury's track. We're going to unmute him and we will mute Jake. So now let's pretend that Maury is actually a character on the other end of a phone. So Jake is talking to Maury on the phone. Well, if we just play it, I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Maury sounds like he's right there with us. So let's add some effects to this track and see if we can make it sound like Maury's on the phone. And this will give us a chance to mess around with some other effects. So if we click on the effects, the first thing that we can add is an equalizer. Uh, and we'll search for EQ. And we get, we'll just use the one that comes with Reaper by default. That's called the REAQ effect. And that adds it to the track two window for Maury. We're going to add EQ. And we get these different bands. And again, I'm not going to go into all the, the details of an EQ, but we'll, we'll manipulate it so you can hear how it changes his voice. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. So right now the EQ is flat and you can see that yellow line that's moving. That's actually uh, the sound wave and where the different frequency is at that particular moment. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed. You know what I mean? Okay. So we know with a phone line uh, that typically there's no bass on a phone line and there's also no treble on a phone line. So you see I'm just pulling those two ends of the spectrum way down. So I'm cutting off the the bass frequencies and the treble frequencies. And maybe I'll boost the mid-range frequencies a little bit. Now let's see how it sounds. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed, you know what I mean? Now that sounds a lot more like he's over a phone, right? We hear it through that little tinny speaker. Uh, and that's pretty good. 
But let's add a couple of more effects so you can see how they get chained together. So maybe the next thing we'll do is we'll add, uh, we'll reduce the resolution of a phone. So a phone actually doesn't carry uh, 16 or 24 bits worth of information on it. It actually has a bit reduction effect added to it. So let's uh, search for reduction. And Reaper comes with this one called uh, bit reduction. And the phone line, because it's limited bandwidth, actually has a lower resolution. It's only got about eight bits of data that gets added to the track. So let's see what it sounds like now. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed, you know what I mean? So it, you see how it re reduces that, uh, that uh, clarity. It actually sounds a lot more like it's over a speaker. But... I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed, you know what I mean? If you listen closely, if you're wearing headphones, you can also hear that that bit reduction has now added a ton of static to our track. Watch, I'll bypass it. And the static goes away. So, by reducing that bit, uh, that bit depth for that, for that track, it, it introduces noise, which is not good. So the next thing that we would do to get rid of that noise is you can add a gate. Uh, I have another video on my channel on how to use a noise gate. And a noise gate's job is to make the quiet parts quieter. So right now, since nothing's playing, we actually don't want that static to appear. So we can add a gate effect to, that, uh, to this track. And a gate is very much like a, think of it like a door. It's a door that's closed when it's silent and a door that's open when there's sound coming in. So by adding a gate, I can adjust the threshold of that gate and just move it up until the door closes on the silence. You see that? See that where that green is? So that's the current noise we hear. And as we moved our threshold up above that noise, it disappears. Below the threshold, you hear the static. Above the threshold, you don't hear the static. So now we should get a nice silent part in between Maury's words. Let's listen again. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed, you know what I mean? What are you guys going to do? The same act? Wearing those same Fakakta suits? No scare. Okay, so that's, getting, that's definitely getting better. So we still hear the static, but it's only present during his words. So here's the last thing to know about the effects. So the effects go together in a chain. They're not processed all at once. They're processed one after each other. So the signal goes from top to bottom. It goes in through the top effect and comes out through the bottom and into the next effect. So the sound goes through the equalizer, then through the bit reducer, then through the gate in this particular order because that's the order they're in. Now, what I think should happen is I think that we should do the bit reduction first and then equalize it. And let's see what happens then. So if we drag the order, well, let's first listen. Before I drag it, let's listen. So as we play it, listen for the static that's present in that voice. Don't know. Times have changed. You know what I mean? What are you guys going to do? The same act? Right? You hear that you hear the, uh, the reduction and the, the, you hear that noise. And the noise is across the entire spectrum. It's the voice that was being equalized, but then the noise is applied across the entire spectrum. What we should do is we should reduce the bits first and then equalize out the noise. So let's do the bit reduction first, and then we'll equalize the sound and see if we can also have the noise only occur in the in the equalized section so let's turn off the gate let's bypass the gate we get the noise again but now we hear the static is not bright and across the whole spectrum it's only we're only hearing it after it's been equalized so if we do it after you hear the noise is more lush and brighter you hear it on the whole spectrum and if we put it before we hear that the noise is being equalized and now if we turn our gate back on, the noise should disappear and it should only be heard during the parts that he's speaking. 5,000 bucks. 
Who you guys think you are, the Beatles? Hey, you know the size of the hole you gotta work to take in that kind of money, huh? Now it sounds a lot more like it's coming through a telephone. And so the order of your effects matters. Great. So now what we have is we have Maury on the phone. We've got Jake in his room, and we can actually listen to this and see that it sounds like two different people in two different locations. So let's just listen to the first bit of dialogue. Maury, you owe me. We'll play anywhere, anytime, for anybody. Put us up in the Double Up Lounge or the Morgan Park Theater or the Crystal. We always knock them dead in those joints. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed. You know what I mean? Uh, what are you guys going to do? The same act? Great. So you can hear that it sounds like two different characters in two different locations. One's on the phone and one's in this echoey, reverby sauna location. Uh, so what's really cool about this now is let's say that that phone effect is something we wanted to retain. Now that we've got it dialed in and it sounds the way we like it, now we can tell Reaper that's what a phone effect sounds like. And I want you to memorize what that effects chain is like. So I can always put anybody on the phone without having to go through and redo all of those different settings. So if I go into the FX window and I select all of these uh, effects in the chain, so I'm going to hold down shift and click them all and select them, I can now tell Reaper to create this and memorize it as a chain. So once I've selected those three items, I'll right click in this side pane and choose FX chain. And I'm going to save the selected FX as a chain, or I could save all of them. If there was more than one, I could either save this whole window as a chain, or I could save the selected one as a chain. I've selected them, so I'll do save selected. And I'm going to call this the phone effect. And now I've got that saved so I can reuse that in any other project. So let's close that. Now let's show how that works. So if I come back over to Jake and I right click in that side panel and I go to the FX chains and I load the FX chain called phone effect and click open, you see it adds those three effects back in the right in the in that same chain so let's turn off the reverb and let's see now that jake is on the phone you owe me we'll play anywhere anytime for anybody and i'll turn off maury's uh, effects for the moment i'll just bypass them i'll turn those off and we'll see that maury's now in our room and uh, we hear jake on the phone you owe me we'll play anywhere anytime for anybody put us up in the double up lounge or the morgan park theater or the crystal we always knock them dead in those joints. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed, you know what I mean? So we could have recast that as Jake is on the phone and Maury's in his office or whatever it is. We can reuse those effects and create that template. So now I've got that phone effect and I can reuse that on any project at any time. So whenever you get a cool effect that you really like, you can save it as a chain and build up a library of all of these different cool effects. So one more thing that I'd like to also show you is now that we've created an FX chain that is a, a list of all of the FX together, you can also create presets for any of the individual effects if that's something that you'd like to reuse again. So let's go back to Jake. And let's say that that reverb, let's say that was a room sound that we really liked that reverb uh, effect, that was exactly the tone we were looking for, and we wanted to remember how that was. If on the reverb, with that selected, you can also click this plus here and add a preset for that particular uh, setup of reverb. So let's save it as a uh, um, sauna room effect. I don't know, that's something that we might use uh, a lot in this project. Let's say a lot of scenes take place in that room, that steam room or that sauna room. We click OK. I can now always go back and put that, uh, that particular effect. Uh, I, can bring, I can recall that at any time and always get those same settings back. So now we can put Maury in the sauna and have Jake uh, on the phone. Let's close that. 
And let's go back here and we will add reverb. Click OK. And we will put him in the sauna room effect and we'll turn off the phone effect. So now we'll unbypass. We'll turn the effects back on. And now we should be able to have Jake in the on the phone and Maury in the sauna. Park Theater or the Crystal. We always knock them dead in those joints. I don't know, boys. I just don't know. Times have changed, you know what I mean? And so that's pretty amazing. Now we hear we've completely reversed the, the setting and we've done it all with presets. Now we can switch back and forth really quickly and always be able to recall those settings. So that's some of the really powerful features of Reaper. If you get settings that you like for a particular effect, you can add it as a preset and recall it whenever you want. And if you have a series of effects in a chain, you can save that chain and bring those back at any time. Cool, so let's recap. So in this video, we've shown how to record a track. We've shown how to edit a track. We split the tracks, we rippled them on, we rippled the whole thing. We learned how to hold down that option key and slide within the time window. We saw how to move the clips back and forth. And then we added effects and we chained them together and we save those effects as a chain that we can reuse. So I hope you learned something, and I hope you'll keep watching the Reaper for VoiceOver series. Thanks for watching.